All righty, Hope Chapel. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Woo! Good to see you guys. Um, good morning. It's beautiful out. Awesome. So my name is Levi. I'm the youth director, uh, and I'm so glad that you guys are here this morning. Yeah, good morning. He is risen, and look at this weather. I am so... He is risen indeed. You jumped ahead a step. Um, we are so, so excited. My name is Maddie. I run our social media, so if you see me with a camera, don't get freaked out. Smile, wave, whatever you got to do. But I'm just so happy to be here. And doesn't our campus look beautiful today? I mean, so many people putting in hard work. And a special shout out to John Weston, who was here just working all day yesterday to just make sure everything was tip top shape. Thank you, John. We appreciate you, right? Amen, amen. All right, and then before we start with announcements, there's a little thing we like to do here where I say he is risen and you all say he is risen indeed. So we're gonna do it real quick. I'm going to say it really loud, and you guys, as loud as you can, let's let the neighbors know what day it is, all right? So, he is risen. He is risen indeed. All right, one more time. He is risen. He is risen awesome. All right, so if you guys have a bulletin, you guys can open it up with me. We have a couple important announcements. Uh, first one is get connected. It's on the page. It's in bold, and there's QR codes for you guys to scan. So, if you guys are here for the first time, or you're a regular attendee, um, there's something for you to get connected with. So you guys can go ahead, scan these QR codes, uh, and find uh, a community. Find a place, find a belonging. Yeah, Awesome. We are so excited. Get connected, scan the QR codes, stay in the loop. There's three different QR codes. Get connected, stay in the loop, and then an easy way to give. So nothing has to be paper today. It's just this one, and you can scan anything on there. But um, otherwise, we have a lot of exciting things in store. A beautiful choir here today, which I'm really excited about. And then we'll have baptisms later, so make sure you stick around for those. And um, yeah, Levi's the boss. Um, two more things. So as you're getting connected, uh, we have a class here at Hope Chapel called Roots 101. And so if you've taken it before, you can attest that it is a wonderful class. And if you have not taken it yet, now is the time. So get connected with the ministry leader after today. Um, and then also, for the youth group, I'm the youth director. Uh, I'm going to take some time and talk about our next event coming up. So April 11th, we are doing a huge event. Every six months, we pack out the place and we just make an awesome fun night. So if you guys have any students, middle school to high school, April 11th, 6.30 p.m., tell them to come. And yeah, that's yeah. all. Awesome. We're so excited. I'm just going to pray and we are going to jump into worship. And I'm just so excited. Man, the Lord is showing up and he showed up today outside the, the tomb. So I'm excited. Let's pray. Um, Dear Lord, we thank you, God, that you did do it, and you will do it again, God. I pray that any of our souls feeling lost, that you would just put that resurrection power in our souls today, that we would hear your word, God, and we'd be, remember, we'd be remembering your promise to us, God. We thank you for the sacrifice and you rising again. And it is a joyous morning to be together, God. We thank you for the blessing of togetherness and um, connection. God, we thank you, we love you, we honor you, and we give you the praise today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys can join me, stand, and then the lyrics will be inside the bulletin. Assume your posture of worship, and let's praise together. Because he 
was boiled in sin and shame. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working.
My name is Pastor Dan. <laughs> good morning. Good to see you all this morning. And uh, we all know that Jesus was uh, crucified on Friday, that he was laid in a borrowed tomb. And then an angel came and said to Mary, made an announcement, the best announcement in the whole wide world. It's recorded here in Matthew chapter 28, verse 6. The angel said to Mary, he's not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. The Lord, he has risen. Amen? Amen. Amen. I know, I know that uh, Levi stole my thunder, but <laughs> humor me. We're going to do it three times really fast, okay? I'm going to say... He is risen. You're going to say he is risen indeed. All right. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Give him a big round of applause. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, choir. What a wonderful job. Give it up for the choir. And they do a great job. <clears throat> you know, we worship... Uh, we worship with our whole life. It's not just, you know, 20 minutes of singing. It's our whole life is a testimony to the Lord and a time to worship. And um, in just a moment, we're going to receive our, our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. So you can prepare for that. They mentioned uh, in the bulletin there's a QR code. You can pull out your smartphone and give on Venmo if you'd prefer. But they're going to pass the basket here in just a minute. So worship is our whole life thing. It's, it's full orb. It's, it's our whole being. And, and part of that is giving. There's something I just read the other day that I wanted to pass on to you. God set up giving so the things that we own don't own us. Isn't that good? Does anybody ever struggle with stuff owning you? You know, like you... Yeah. So let me just read one scripture here in... Deuteronomy 15 10 it says give generously to them and do so without grudging a grudging heart then because of this the Lord will bless you in all your work and in everything you put your hand to that's a good promise isn't it and so we're going to receive our offering and then just after that uh, the folks that are getting baptized are going to come join me here on the platform and so would you bow with me in a word of prayer team hope get ready Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful, beautiful day, for answering prayer. There's no rain today. Lord, we worship you with our voice, with our lives, with our giving, in response to all that you've done for us. And so we pray your blessing on this offering and these ties in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Team Hope. Okay, baptizees. Um, for those of you that don't know, this was Pastor Dan Boyd. He's a founder of Hope Chapel. Would you please give him appreciation for his labors of our church and making all this happen for so many years? Thank you, Pastor Dan. All right, those of you that are getting baptized, will you come on up and join me? This is your. This is this is your. This is one of your moments. Yeah. I like I like how the prettiest dress. One of the prettiest dresses is one of the first ones up here. I mean, it's making the boys look bad. I don't really know. I don't want to single anybody out and make it uncomfortable, but I'm just saying. Come on up here, y'all. Just come on up here. Yeah. Isn't this a good group of people getting baptized, y'all? Come on. Yeah. All right. And so, and so this is, this is going to... Oh, come on up. All right. Um, anyone else? Anyone else? See, here's, here's how it works. And, and we, sometimes we complicate stuff in, in church, but this is how it works. In Acts chapter 8... There is an Ethiopian dude who is reading the Bible for himself. And someone comes alongside and says, look, here's the truth of things. Man cannot earn their way to heaven. Jesus Christ made a way so that you could have value, that you could be loved, and that you could have relationship with him. And that when you say yes to him, you say yes to him. And then you keep going. And then as a sign that you want to keep going with him, you're baptized showing the world that you've been forgiven and you've chosen to start over again. It's not complicated. So if anyone else wants to come up and join us, you know how easy it is. Just want to let you know. All right. Amen? All right. Come on. All right. So I'm going to introduce you to some people. 
Um, and um, I'm just going to ask you to tell us who you are, you know, why you're getting baptized today, and if there's anyone you want to give a shout out to to help bring you to this moment, all right? By the way, I told them those questions before. I'm not putting them on the spot. Just want to let you all know that. Okay. How's it going, church fam? So I did have a uh, long-winded speech that I wrote, but uh, I think I'm going to save it for another day. My name's Chris. I was... Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was born in Greenbrae, California, so I guess you could say I'm a native. Uh, I moved to Sandpoint, Idaho when I was about six, and I spent most of my adult life, um, well, my young life in Idaho. Um, the question of who am I is kind of a complicated one because part of me wants to tell you my story, but I think that's a time, that's for another time. Um, why am I getting baptized? Well, about three months ago, um, I had an encounter with what I can only logically describe as the Holy Spirit. And it was a simple message, which I believe is not just meant for me. And it was that I must pick up my cross and I must follow him. And it kept repeating. It's a really simple message, but that cross looks pretty heavy. So it took me a little while to get here. Um, was there anything else? Yeah. You want to give anybody a shout out? To help I'd love to give my family a shout out um, and the church just as a whole, because they have been welcoming from the beginning. And I consider all of you guys like family. Yeah, so. All right. That's awesome. Yeah, we celebrate with you. And then when you're done sharing, you can go sit down if you want to, or you can sit up here and bake with me. Either way, it's okay. All right, man. You're, you're, you're next in line. Sorry, man. Here, come come center. It's a good-looking hat, dude. Yeah. Um, I'm Lincoln. <laughs> and I was thinking about I wanted to get baptized because I want to uh do what's what what i want to do the right thing next yeah that's right. that's right dude yeah that's right is there is there anyone you want to thank for helping you come to this moment right now no right. <laughs> i'm gonna thank lincoln's mom and dad for raising him right and for one of the best looking pastors in sonoma county just saying oh. all right grayson come on up man right. my name is grayson <laughs> I want to get baptized because I want to be closer to Jesus, and I feel like he wants me to get baptized. And I feel like he really wants me to, so, yeah. And, and I want to thank my mom and my dad for bringing me to this moment, and Miss Victoria. All right. yeah. Miss Victoria is his children's church teacher. All right, Shana. Um, I'm Shana, and I feel like God put it on my heart to get baptized, and I also feel like I'm going to set an example for my siblings, who are somewhere. Um, I'd like to thank my parents because they kind of led me in my journey, and I've they're the ones who raised me in this. On church, so yeah. Amen. Awesome. Yeah, Good yeah. job, Good job. Right. Hi, my name is Irene. Um, I'm getting baptized because my sister got very sick, and I felt like if I got baptized and got closer to Jesus, she would answer my prayers more. And I'd like to thank my whole family that they led me here, and yeah. We're proud of you, Irene. All right, you ready? Um, my name is Catalina. Woo! And the reason why I want to get baptized is because I haven't felt happy in a long time. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to thank my family for everything. Mm -hmm. it yeah. We're Woo! proud of you. We're for you, Catalina. Yeah. All right, Victor, come on, man. Um, my name is Victor, and um, I recently gave my life to God at winter camp this year, so I think like the next 
um, big step for me is just to get baptized and really like put in all my effort into God and just my journey with him. And I want to give a shout out to Maria because she's like the main reason why um, I started going to church because she invited me over. And I also want to like um, shout out like her whole family because they really like opened up their house to them and they give me rides um, to church sometimes and back. And I just want to thank them because and also I want to thank um, the leaders because they like supported me throughout like my whole journey with God and they like really supported me, yeah. so yeah. Victor, how old are you, dude? Um, 15. 15, is that good? Yeah. Sure, I'll read it for you. This is my friend, and I, I get to read her words. Yeah, all right. Okay, this is Lisa. Lisa, I, I'm just gonna read it first person, is it okay? Okay. I attended Easter service here at Hope Chapel in April of 2006 and accepted Jesus into my life. But throughout those years, I was not really living to honor um, the Christian life, the honest Christian life. 17 years later, the Lord led me back here for Easter service in 2023. And I have been attending ever since. That's true. I can vouch for that. The Lord has shown and taught me so many amazing things. And today I've decided to take my faith to a higher level by getting baptized. This baptism marks my personal growth and identification with Christ and declares my faith in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well said. I have found more peace and purpose in my life ever since returning to Hope Chapel last year. I want to thank my dear friend, Heather Romero, my aunt, Christy, and my wonderful Bible study ladies for their continued support. I think some of them are sitting over there. Throughout my spiritual journey, I would also like to thank my dear husband, Matthew, and daughter, Taylor, for their endless love with my journey of finding God. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Would you please cheer for Lisa? No, I don't know. You're, you're welcome to try. It's already. Right. Yeah. Hi. It is. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Monique Legrande, and <laughs> and um, I came today because I wanted to spend time with my parents for the Easter. I've been a member of Hope Chapel since as long as I can remember. Um, I used to remember drawing Pastor Dan. Big shout out for Pastor Dan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. Um, I'm here today just to pronounce my faith, and um, I've been seeing this done for a really long time, and I haven't really had a chance to express myself fully ever, and I wanted to try to express that today. Awesome. Can never great, follow Monique. up with that. Yeah. That's great, Monique. We're proud of you. That's awesome. Speaking. I don't know if my speaking of of it being a hard act to follow. Now I have to follow that, <laughs> right? A couple of things that I hope you heard really clearly is I hope I hope that you heard very clearly people talk about how 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 that like God has changed their lives. So like I can tell you that I got to meet Chris and I can tell you when I first met Chris, Chris was kind of angry and a, and, and, and a little um, he was, he's very smart. You probably picked up on that when he spoke, but he's very, very smart. And um, and when and when he would talk, he, he would let you know that he was very smart. And it made it hard sometimes to connect with him. But he is a different dude since he decided to go all in with Jesus. He is so much fun to be around. He's still smart. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he's still really smart. Um, but you can have great conversations with him. And he's humble. And he's fun to be around. And he's more comfortable in his own skin. Amen. And I'm so thankful for that for him. Because I love him and I believe in him. And I want that for him. You know, it's just, it's so great to get to celebrate those. So thanks for being here today with us to celebrate that. So some of you came in, came in hot, and you were relying on someone to save a seat for you. In fact, I'm curious. Anybody want to say, oh, that was me, and I'm so thankful somebody saved a seat for me? Yeah. Yeah, those are, those are really great words for you to get on a text. Saved you a seat. Oh, oh, it's so good. And then it's also the other side of that is the worst. When you're walking up, you're like, oh, that's a great seat, and you sit down, and then there's this, awkward look where you know the person next to you is looking at you 
And you look over and they're like, I'm so sorry, but that seat is saved. <laughs> it's the worst. Oh, it's the worst. I don't know about you, but when I was in middle school, I had to ride the bus in middle school. And I'll tell you, if, if purgatory is real, it resembles a middle school bus in that 15 minutes before you're waiting to get home, baby. It's the worst, okay? And when, when you're in middle school, where you sit is status, okay? The further to the front you sit, the more losery you are. The further to, come on, middle schoolers, if you're in the crowd, am I lying right now? No, I am not. You are, when you get on a school bus, you are darting for one spot, man. As far back from the bus driver as humanly possible. Keep your head down, keep your mouth shut, and dart for the back. And if you get one of the far back seats, you have gold status. And then if somebody sits with you, you get to dictate who sits with you. If it's the hot girl, yeah, oh yeah, you can sit there. If it's the weird kid, nah, man, it's saved. <laughs> it's the best it's power and when you're in middle school you don't got a lot of power it's a big deal but when someone saves a seat for you it's a big deal this is important for you to know in life you have a certain kind of a seat that's saved for you you have a seat with people in your life that only you occupy and it's a big deal only you get to be the Son, daughter, parent, grandparent, aunt, uncle, cousin. Only you. No one else gets to fill that seat. In fact, therapist's office are packed with people who are trying to cope with the idea that somebody left a seat empty that they needed there for all key moments in their lives. It's a big deal. You show me good marriages that are working well, it's because they understand that only one person can sit in that seat across from them and only they can see, sit in the seat across from their spouse. They understand that. Marriage problems happen when we start to let someone else sit in that seat. That's when marriage problems happen. Problems with us and our kids start to happen when we start to get up from our seat a few too often times and we expect someone else to sit there and the kid looks over and it's empty too many times. Problems happen. I want to remind you that the seat you occupy is a big deal. One of the hardest things I had to go through prior to moving out here to Sonoma County is I had to walk with my friend. I got a call and his son had never arrived at school and his son never came home from school. And we sat in his living room. We sat and we prayed and we talked and we cried. And at 10 o'clock at night, we got a phone call from a police officer four hours away who had found his son's car with his cell phone and wallet in it, part next to to the highest rainbow bridge in the entire state of Texas. My friend's seat across from him will forever be empty. No one fills that spot. You have a spot in someone else's life that no one else can fill, regardless of how dark, how distant, how much disdain you hold for yourself. You need to hold on to the fact that your life has incredible value and purpose. And if you leave your seat, no one fills it. No one. You're not just playing a role like on a TV show or a podcast or a movie or a play. You're you and God made you you on purpose. No one replaces you ever, ever. Don't ever lose sight of that. Some of you come to church as often as you can. Some of you come to church for the big holidays. That's how I was raised, by the way. Some of, you, some of you come as often as you can. Some of you come occasionally. It's okay. We live busy lives. Everyone's welcome here. We're just glad you're here with us today. Okay? But here's the thing. Everyone needs to hear the fact that there's a unique spot that each of us has. And things get bumpy 
when we leave our seat too often or someone leaves the seat in front of us. And I'm sure even as I process that, you can resonate with that, right? But here's the other one. Here's the other one that's a big deal. Is there's also only one seat that only one person is allowed to sit in. And that's God. And all kinds of people will put different things in this seat to be God. They'll put all kinds of stuff in it. They'll put awards in it. They'll put accomplishments in it. They'll put another human being in it. It happens. Some of us have done that before. It might be a status symbol of some kind. It might be that promotion or that number in our account. But we put something in this seat, and this seat is reserved for only one person. There's a uniqueness to it. There's an isolated value to it that's different. The same way that you have isolated value on the seat that you have, that only you can feel. Okay? See, this was talked about a long time ago. In Psalm 145, we actually read that God's kingdom is supposed to be everlasting. It means it lasts literally forever, hence the word everlasting. Okay? It's like the Energizer Bunny, but on steroids. Okay? Like bigger. Years before Jesus Christ would be born as a baby, which, by the way, like, like the, the, the different Christmas songs, glory to the... Oh, we got some singers more than just our choir, which our choir was awesome, by the way. Wasn't that choir great? Come on, that choir was great. Yeah. Glory to the newborn king. Don't miss that. It was like, come on, man. Come on, pastor. It's Easter, not, not Christmas. Stop crossing your holidays. By the way, I've got to be honest with you. Christmas is a lot easier to preach on. You're talking about this beautiful new baby and everything, and everything's all sweet, and we get presents. And then Easter, you talk about Jesus dying. <laughs> and it's hard. Try talking about that with a little kid, okay? That gets rough. That's why I like, I like Sunday a lot better than with Friday and the Easter story, because we're talking about Jesus rising as the risen king. Hundreds of years before Jesus would even be born as that newborn king that we read about, that the wise guys traveled, across hundreds of miles to go visit, we find out that the prophet Zechariah says that there will be a king born who will rule over all the earth. That's what it says in Zechariah 14. And this king that comes is Jesus. His place in our lives is unique. Only he holds this seat. No one else does. No one else does. Some of you are like, Man, pastor I had growing up, he was really cool and he let us do all this kind of stuff and he would tell us these funny stories and he had these great funny jokes. We'd all roll our eyes, but they were still kind of funny, kind of sort of, sort of, kind of. He can't, he or she can't sit in the seat for you. Your grandma, who's, who's, who's worn holes in her carpet praying for you as you grew up and survived your teen years. Praying for your parents as they tried to survive your teen years. <laughs> She can't sit in the seat. Do you know that that's another myth? We do that. We actually try to have somebody else sit in this seat for us. Either as God in his seat or as us in our seat. Well, it's okay. You know, my grandma's got this taken care of for me. She can sit in this seat for me. It's okay. My, my wife's more spiritual than I am. She can sit in that seat for me. It's not how it works. Only he sits in the seat. Do you know why I know that? Because that's what God tells me. And, and the reason that we talk about this is, yes, he is risen. And that's what we talk about at Easter. But there's a prayer that I have for you that's unique and different. If you have a Bible or you have a Bible app, I'd love for you to open it to the book of Colossians in the New Testament. In the book of Colossians in the New Testament, there's this really, really cool passage of Scripture in Colossians chapter 1 that we're going to take a peek at together in our time. And I am having sensitivity to the fact that we're multi-generational and that some of us are frying in the sun. And I promise you that I'm not going to preach a 45-minute message. It's going to be 43 minutes, okay? No, it's not going to be that long. <laughs> some of you that are new are going, is he serious right now? No, he's not. You'll know when I'm serious. You've already seen me serious for a minute. See, in Colossians chapter 1, starting in verse 11, there's a really cool thing here that I don't want you to miss. We pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so you will have the endurance and patience you need 
that you may be filled with joy. Those are promises that God has for you and wants for you that actually no one else can truly fulfill. You can't get it out of a jar or a bottle or a bag. You can't get it from a job or a status symbol or a car. You can't get it from a relationship with another human because all of us are hopelessly imperfect regardless of how well put together you might be this morning. (laughs) We're all hopelessly imperfect. Just a matter of where and who finds out and how badly. Or who got a picture of it and sent it to America's home, home, Funniest Home Videos and tried to make money off of it. <laughs> but we're all hopelessly imperfect. We pray that you'll be strengthened with his glorious power, that you'll have endurance and patience, and may you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. He wants more for you and me. He wants more for us than just the extra day-to-day life, than the wake up in the morning, work out, go to work, come home, do stuff around the house, rinse, repeat. He wants more than that for us. Four, verse 13, he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness. Y'all, there is so much darkness in this world and it's getting darker. Darkness by this. Darkness meaning things that cover up where we should go and what we should do. Chaos that comes. Some translations actually use the word chaos instead of darkness. Isn't that interesting? Chaos. I don't know about you, but I sometimes feel a little chaos in my life. And that's more than just trying to hurt a three-year-old through Target. (laughs) He has transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. Some translations say, loved son. And that's what the pathway is supposed to be for you and for me. He purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. And then the passage of scripture changes a little bit. It ties in why we have the big word behind us. Supreme. Kind of a cool word, huh? Might have seen it on a sticker or a t-shirt. Might have you're old enough you might remember diana ross singing with a group of women that consider themselves supremes right you might have gotten a pizza of course before that's a good pizza right there that's a good pizza one thing i've learned as a former youth pastor not all pizzas created equal it's not it's not don't give into it don't give into it christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. The seat he has is different. No one else gets to sit in the seat. He is supreme over all of creation. He has earned the right to sit in this seat. And y'all know why? Because he loves you more, deeper, bigger, better than anyone else can. He does. You want to know why I know that? Because we're sitting here on Easter morning celebrating the fact that he proved who he said he was. That he died, he was dead for three days, and he rose again. And he did it for you and for me. In all of your worst moments and all of my worst moments, he did it. Before we were even around, he did it. He did it once and for all. He included you and me generations later, continents away to a place and a time that nobody could have even begun to envision in their minds. Look at how differently things are now versus how they were in 2015. You ever thought, thought about that for a minute? That's nine years ago. That's not that long ago in the greater scheme of things. Well, I mean, we have some like nine-year-olds getting baptized. So for them, it was a, it was a lifetime ago. Um, <laughs> but for most of us here, it's not that far ago. Not in the greater scheme of things. Look how different things are. Some things that we thought were permanent were ripped away from us. Some things we thought were permanent were forever changed in front of us. And some things we thought were forever important were forever reduced inside of us. But we're still here. Something has to be supreme. Something has to be most. And that something is someone and it's Jesus Christ. He is supreme over all creation, for through him God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. 
He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. For God in his fullness was pleased to live in Christ, and through him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. He is supreme. Only he gets to sit in this seat. No one else can. And so, as a reminder of that, I brought this. See, it's, like, it's funny, because, I mean, you know, we, we see championship trophies, and we see championship rings, and we see medals and awards and all these different kinds of things. And even this is just a pale, awful prop to be used in the place of what it could or should be. One of my favorite images in all of the Bible is in the book of Revelation. And it talks about there being these church leaders that are in the very presence of Jesus. And that, when, and, and that what happens is they fall on their faces and they cast their crowns at the feet of Jesus Christ. And in my head, I can literally see this moment of people going to their faces and pulling a crown off their head and sliding it across this elaborate marble, pristine floor to the feet of Jesus sitting at the throne with marks still in his feet because he bore those marks even in a resurrected body. And we know that because he revealed them to the disciples on Sunday and after and after and after. There's a difference in who sits in this seat and who doesn't. Only he can sit in this seat. No one else can. Some of us are trying to sit in that seat for someone else. We feel God-like pressure in order to help someone else experience a God-like relationship. I think that's one of the reasons why so many people are emotionally crumbling in the 21st century. Because if you and I tried to live with God-like pressure to have God-like status, in a human relationship, we will fail, falter, and fall. It is absolutely unavoidable. And some of you are experiencing that. Some of you are crumbling under that pressure. Some of you have completely given up with it entirely. In fact, you've given up that this chair even exists in your life. If there were a God who were so loving, why does dot, dot, dot? That's a great way to start a good question. Sometimes that answer to that question, by the way, is I don't know. Sometimes the answer to that question is we live in a broken world where broken people do broken things. And there are times we get scratched, scraped, and cut by the broken edges of other people's lives. There's just no way around it. I wish I could give you a better answer. But if we have a king who loves who's willing to stoop down and sit across from us. We have a God who loves and doesn't force his way on top of us and into our lives. That's the cost of love. Love doesn't push, bully, or force. Love comes under at even level and serves. That's what love does. And Jesus, when he stooped down to wash his disciples' feet, on Thursday night, when he was betrayed by one of his closest friends, when he was led away to be interrogated, tortured, incarcerated, then paraded through town to the top of a hill so that everybody could see it, and was publicly killed in a long, tortuous manner. He was thinking about you and me and serving and loving. And then he rose again. And he did that to show us he was who he said he was. And that he wants you to see him in your life and who he's supposed to be. The only one who can sit in this chair. So what am I going to ask of you today? I'm going to ask of you to do the same thing that those of us that we're going to be celebrating baptisms here in a few minutes do. I'm going to ask you to take your rightful place across from the, the God who can only sit in the chair directly across from you. And I want you to say, Jesus, I saved you a seat. Thank you 
for saving me. Thank you for rescuing me from this life of trying to feel like I have to have it all together all the time. Thank you for giving me when I've blown it and I haven't known what to do with it. Thank you for forgiving me when I lose my stuff with my kids, when I lose my stuff with the guy on the other side of the phone, when I lose my stuff with the guy who cut me off in traffic and even worse, doesn't even see me lose my stuff because he was so dumb and what he did should not be allowed. And where was a police officer to see that? Sorry. But only one person can be in that seat. And only one person can be in this seat. I can't tell you how much I want for you to take your rightful seat. Don't give it away. Don't walk away from it. The people in your life need you. And you need God because you cannot be God in this life. It's too much pressure. It's too much. It's too much. It's why we have a pandemic where people are lonely because they don't think they can be around other people. It's why we have an epidemic where we have people taking their own lives. That's why we have a problem with other things on the rise. Why people are trying to medicate their difficult lives with fentanyl and alcohol and other things we won't talk about here at church. Because they're trying to figure it out. They're trying. But those things aren't going to fill you up. They're going to make the hole deeper and grosser and worse. One person in this seat. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to do something kind of strange. In your, you heard, heard Levi and Maddie talk about it earlier. But in your, um, in your paper we gave you when you came in, at least I hope you got one. That's beautiful art on the front of it. There's a QR code in there. And there's a chance for us to get to know you better. And there's a chance for us to have an opportunity to pray with you and to help connect you with a caring church. And we're not perfect here. Uh, you, can t- you can look around here and see that. No offense. Some of you, some of you show it. Um, but there's a QR code there. You can take a picture with your phone. And if you want to make a decision to give God his rightful seed in your life, you can say yes to him. We'd like to be able to follow up with you. Talk with you over coffee. Pray for you. Help connect you with some people that are going to help you understand more of what it means to walk this out in everyday life. Maybe connect you with a small group here, a men's Bible study. We have one starting up men Tuesday night. I'm really excited about it. Um, women's Bible study, a rooted group. There's information at that at our info tent. But here's the other one. You're like, you know what? I want to give Jesus the seat now. And I want to talk to somebody. Um, this blue tent over here to my left, your right. There's going to be some really great people there that would love to pray with you help answer some questions, help you process some things, help connect you with some caring people. And um, I would encourage you to do one of two things. Don't click, don't leave here without clicking the QR or talking to somebody who wants to help you see Jesus in his right seat in your life. And this is what I like to do. I like to take a moment and pray. I'm going to invite up um, our lead worshipers for this next moment. I'm going to invite our baptizees to start to get into position. And while they're moving around, we're going to take a moment. We're going to pray. Is that all right? It's a big moment, y'all. It's a big moment for you because I'm hoping you'll put Jesus in his right seat. It's a big moment because here in a few minutes, we're going to celebrate with some other people as they're putting Jesus in his rightful seat in their lives. And, um, and then when we're done praying, if, you, if, if you're connected personally to some of our baptizees and you'd like to get a little closer at that time, you can do that too, okay? So let's pray. Um, Father, thank you. Thank you that we can come to you. And it's as simple as sitting down with you and talking with you. Thank you, Lord, that you never give up on us. You never let go of us. And even though we might have a hard time understanding at times, you never really let us down. And so, Lord, I pray for the person today that's that's heard some of these things before but in the greater scheme of things they haven't they haven't let you sit in your rightful place they just haven't someone else has been sitting there 
And if that's you, I just want to encourage you right now, just in this silent moment, just say yes to him. There's some people that have heard some of these things before, but it's just seemed distant and foreign to them. I pray for those people that are in our midst that have never said yes to you before. I pray they take a chance on you, Lord. I pray they say yes to you right now. Not that they have to have it all figured out. Not that they have to have all their questions answered. But they understand that you're real and they want to give you the right seat in their lives. And if that's you, I just want to give you a moment right now just to say yes. And Father, for the rest of us, for the times that we're tempted to either walk away from the seat that only we're supposed to sit in, and we're away from it a little too long, for the times that we let something else jump into the seat that's saved for you, Lord, would you forgive us? Would you help us to put you where you're supposed to be, where you deserve to be, where you've earned the right to be? Would we please do that well and often? And by your spirit, would you please make us sensitive to the times that something else is crowding in? Will we be defensive of that space? Lord, I thank you for each person here. I thank you for those getting ready to be baptized, for all the prayers that are represented in these people, for all the hours of, of, of processing and questioning, of praying and seeking that's represented in these moments, for the family members and friends that have been there alongside these people and watch them grow and choose to change and to want to follow you. Lord, I pray that you bless them, encourage them. May they feel your mercy in their lives daily. May they walk as a forgiven saint and not under some dark cloud of thinking that their identity is as a sinner. Lord, we thank you and we love you and we praise you. And we thank you that you are supreme and that we don't have to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.